Well, hi folks, another sort of 10 day, two, two weekly fortnightly roundup. Just start off in the old uh, greenhouse, which now, as you can see, is resembling a jungle. So, uh, just start off with tomatoes. Not getting any ripe yet, but uh, get some nice trusses, the Shirley's. Some nice big trusses. Look at that one, that's a crack of that. And, uh, but it's like anything in it, once, once one goes ripe, they all start ripening up, but none yet so it's going to be probably august with time i get a first ripe tomato big one anyway but anyway they're looking good so far this oxhorn thing i've still not eaten one it's just chucking them out left right and center all over the place never seen as many peppers on a plant in my life so i must eat one and see what they're like they might be terrible and <laughs> then i'll never grow them again but we'll see normal peppers been taking a few of those so uh, they've been they're nice as usual Got a couple more of those, and they're sending out some new ones. So maybe we get a second flush of uh, fruit off those. I've only got one cherry tomato this year. I made a bit of a mess of uh, when I grew them. So I've just got this one. Gardener's delight, and they're getting even bigger. Look, they're too big for gardener's delight, surely. Surely. But anyway, they're still not ripened up. I think they've got one ripening up, but uh, very slow to ripen this year. Chilies going nuts now these are the Joe's long I'll show you the sort of length that they get to they get longer than that as well if you get a bigger when you get them on a bigger plant but uh, doing well they need a bit of a feed I've not started feeding them yet what I do I tend not to feed them until they produce loads of flowers sort of stress them into producing flowers and then once they produce loads of flowers and chilies then I start feeding them to make them uh, get loads of big chilies same thing with the prairie fires not fed those once yet and they're just starting to form the fruit they've got absolutely hundreds of flowers on now so I'll start feeding them and we should get a good crop now my big cucumbers stop producing and now the little ones taking over if I can get in they're not little ones they're sort of half size ones though. but now this is producing absolutely armfuls of them so oh, good old healthy cucumbers right that's about it in greenhouse anyway not a lot's changed everything's just getting bigger and takes more watering so uh, just knock up head up up to the plot now and I'll show you what's going on up there well, hi folks nearly getting on to the end of July now so things are really cropping well now so I've got my patented pea picking pot on aka ice cream tub with a bit of string wrapped around it so I'm getting plenty of peas now we, read, we started picking them about a week ago and we're picking them every other day getting about I would say one of these full every two days, so I've got a gallon every two days. There's probably another picking or two left, but uh, they've been good. Lacking a bit of water actually because we've not had much rain. I'm supposed to absolutely throw it down tomorrow. So that should give me a, little, a last little bit of a perk up. But they're good. First green shaft, I'd urge anyone to grow on. Usually get 10 or 11 peas sometimes. For ten in that one, great, great piece. So anyway, I'll get on, pick a few more of these, and I'll just show you what's going on around the rest of the plot. All right, then, folks, that's a, another gallon of peas picked. I'll just let you show you what's going on around the rest of the stuff. Now I cannot believe the size of these savoy cabbages. I don't know whether I can get my hand in. Honestly, some of them are nearly the size of a football, and it's not even August yet. And they're all the same. These early ones, trouble as you can't see for this. They're absolutely huge. I mean, last year. They were about that size when they'd finished in the end of September, but I just can't understand why they're so big. These are the early savoys or mini savoys. So I'm going to have to grow them a bit later next year because these are the big savoys. And as you can see, well, you probably can't see with this blooming stuff. Just starting to heart up, which will be perfect for winter because they should keep over winter. But the other ones, no chance. They're going to have to start eating them in summer. So anyway, it's a bit of a strange one. Oh, right, finally, it's getting a bit windy now. The banana shallots from seed, the giant banana shallots, well, they're not giant this year, they're just starting to bulb up now. They're so far behind last year. Quite a disappointing crop this year, but uh, they'll just be a little bit smaller than last year because they were cracking last year, absolutely enormous. But I don't think anyone's had a really good sort of experience with them this year because everyone's had sort of patchy results, patchy germination. And quite pathetic plants so uh, some you win some years sometimes you lose anyway right 
pulled all my bolting lettuce up, the, the first lot, and I planted some more little ones, so that's my third batch. Just getting through the second lot of lettuce, and uh, so certainly got a constant supply of that stuff. Now, unfortunately, my leeks, which are looking good, have just started, if I bring it in, you can just see some rust spores appearing. I'm not going to dig them up yet, I'm going to give them another two weeks and hopefully we don't get too much rain, it shouldn't spread too much and give the bulbs a little bit of time to, to swell because it doesn't actually affect the bulb, it just kills the foliage which stops the bulbs growing so people say oh you get it on the bulbs and it rots and well as far as I'm concerned it doesn't, it just makes the, the yield smaller because it stops the, the leaves doing the work so like I say I'll, just, I'll let it grow as long as I can without it getting absolutely ridiculous and spreading onto everything and uh, see how we get on try and get around this side of the wind, it's the wind's getting up. Potatoes, like I said we've not had any rain as such, so I've been short of rain, I've been giving them as much as I can, about a gallon every three or four days. I'm not going to water them tonight because it's supposed to chuck it down all day tomorrow, so that'll give them a little bit, although not much of it gets into the pots when they're in, when they're growing in pots rather than in the ground, so that's one drawback of uh, spuds in the pots, but apart from that, if they don't blow away, they should be quite good. Over in the giant marabit and things like that, the plant's about, what, I would say 12 foot long now. And I've got a couple of marrows set, but unfortunately they're a bit close to the back of the plant. You really want them about 10 foot away from the, from the end, so they've got a lot of plant behind them. But I've got another two, about another three foot further on. So I think if those set there, those two that are about 12 foot along, then I will chop those off and we'll go for these because they always get a bigger marrow usually when it's uh, got a bigger plant behind it so hopefully we should get a decent marrow I've got another one in there same thing because it's been a bit slow this year and it's been so cold really up here and quite a bit behind so the marrows I do have set are a bit too close to the you know they're on a bit of a small plant at the moment so uh, we'll have to leave it another week I've got about another week to go and then it's six weeks until the show, so you really want six weeks of growing, so we'll see how we get on anyway. Um, second lot of peas, doing well now. They've got pods on actually now, so I should have a continuous supply. Once, Because the ones I've just been picking, they should uh, probably get another week or so out of those, and then by then that time they should be ready. Turnips really need thinning out now. This is where I had my um, shallots, where I pulled the shallots up from. They really need thinning out, so uh, we'll get on with that in a bit when I can be bothered. <laughs> spring onions, some more clumps of spring onions in there. A few more third lettuces. The onions, which a lot of went, a lot of them went to seed, but we started to get the odd one bulbing up. But it's been a really bad year for onions personally this year. If you can see, it's a bit weedy in here, but they've just not made any size, even the ones that haven't gone to seed. So a bit disappointing, really. Leeks still ticking away slowly but we've not had any rain for ages up here like everyone else got a big downpour the other day but we we missed it luckily but the garden could do with a little bit but the cabbages seem to be doing right these are the other cabbages you probably can't see through the mesh and the kale just seems to grow in all weathers i'll just show you me uh me show stuff that's sort of outside if you will not in the polytunnel which is it's doing okay now these are my parsnips in the barrels if you see the tops they're not too bad Sometimes you can get really big tops and nothing underneath, so that's my theory with these. Not the world's biggest tops, and we might have a giant root underneath. And the carrots have actually picked up a bit now. I've started feeding them a little bit because if it does rain, it just tends to wash out the fertilizer in when it's outside rather than in the polytunnel where I don't give them that, that much water. But you can flush out the nutrients. So, so far, so good for the ones inside. I'll just show you my last bit where I've got another three maras growing actually. Another giant one there, one of my own from last year's 85 pounder under a bit of windbreak. And the one at the back there is from a 125 pound yellow marrow, so that should be quite interesting. I'm just hoping it doesn't pollinate the rest of them. I'd just like to grow a really freaky big yellow one for some reason, but trouble is if it does pollinate one of the giants, you might get a smaller, a smaller odd coloured giant. Right, I've just been looking down by my rhubarb and I found a load of old smashed up snails, so obviously there's been a blackbird or a thrush doing its good thing for the garden and eating my snails and there's a stone there with loads of chips on so it must have been smashing them on there and eating the inside so it's absolutely full of snails 
they're not the normal snails, they're these fancy fancy swirly ones but that's good isn't it when you get a blackbird keep the blackbirds in your garden and let them eat all the snails polytunnel and things are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger I'll start around this side first this is me one of my giant carrots now if I try and get my hand in for perspective look at the state that is one carrot and that's the leaves of one carrot so what on earth is underneath there I do not know and I've got three like that there's another one that's pushing its way out <laughs> oh, I love this daft stuff and there's another two so we'll see I grew a couple of big red onions this year but they're not big at all compared to the ones I used to grow they might make a pound but uh, it's just a bit of a novelty right the giant tomatoes the ugly things that's one of those double ones there it's getting quite big now but they're all, it's this plant that they seem to be going mad on I mean that's as big as the palm we have now and it's only a, it's not that long not that old and the one at the bottom that started ages ago that's quite a big size bigger than anything I've ever grown so be interesting to see how big they get they're all edible it's just a big freaky veg so we'll, we'll see how they get on carrots long carrots again same thing doing really well so I'll just gloss over that onions starting to bulb up now a little bit the, the show onions get some nice quite nice shaped ones but the way behind anything I've grown previous years look at that they're tiny compared to that I mean usually they'd be like three or four pound by now and they're probably just a pound so because I didn't grow them myself I just bought some little seeds some little plants and they weren't the best but it's my own fault right second lot of French beans climbing up and god I'm training them up everything this is up they're just, they're just growing up anything it's, it's ridiculous courgettes I'm absolutely sick to death of these I've never seen a bigger plant than that in my life if I can just try and get you some perspective in there's one of those giant water butts and that size of the plant it's just huge and it's still chucking out loads and loads I'm starting to keep it upright with these canes now and you can just keep growing it up and they just keep popping out of the top as you can see growing upright rather than flopping over stops them getting mouldy by flopping on the floor and you end up pick you can end up picking them about chest height eventually right I'll just show you the beans which again is like a jungle growing up to the ceiling along a string and they're just everywhere look just hanging down like bunches of peas beans look all over cobra French climbing bean called cobra so I would urge anyone if they've never tried them before give them a go they're the most prolific bean ever I only grow five plants and I'm not kidding you I'm getting about two pounds every three days off just five plants they're only six inches apart and they're just hanging everywhere so cobra it's a cracking variety finally the giant onion I think it's just about giving up the ghost now there's my bottle for, for scale 23 and a half inches in circumference now so it's probably getting off a seven pound but I've had problems with these flies these uh, fungus gnats and what they do is they lay their eggs in the soil in the, in the compost it's this cheap rubbish compost you see and what they do is they live off the roots and they eat the roots turn into maggots hatch out and the cycle just continues and there's nothing you can do about it if you can see I put all these yellow traps that just catches the adults you see how many there are that catches the adults but then by the time you've caught them they've laid another thousand eggs in the soil and the, the process just continues and there's nothing you can do to the soil to to get rid of them so it's a, a pain don't buy cheap nasty horrible compost with them already in I won't tell you the variety but uh, some people will probably have a good guess at what it is right I think that's it it's getting a bit warm in here it's supposed to absolutely throw it down tomorrow like it did for everybody else on Saturday so I'll just try and get up uh, so I'll just try and get up tonight before the weather turns for a week it's supposed to be a week of horribleness so that's about it folks getting nearly to the end of uh, July last decent day for a bit so uh, that's about it folks see you later